Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook Hogwarts. Restore the Glory of the Black Family. Chapter 31 His wife and children all went to Malfoy Manor, and Cole sat leisurely in the attic, enjoying the peace and thinking about the broomstick. He ate his food one bite at a time. Cole had already understood and studied the products of the four major broom companies. Cole discovered that patents also existed in the wizarding world. Wizards still put a lot of effort into patent protection. At least the technology inside these brooms cannot be deciphered by Cole. Even if a master of curse breaking is hired, it is impossible to decipher the secrets. Also, wizards are not fools. For their own benefit, the broom company must prevent others from cracking its technology. In this case, there is no need for Cole to start from here. Calmly thinking, Cole browsed the system redemption page leisurely and discovered that there was no flying broomstick in the world of mages. Generally speaking, in addition to teleportation arrays, there are also magic airships, but the cost is a bit high. However, the technologies are also similar. Cole exchanged a copy of the core kinetic energy technology of the magic airship. After careful study, I discovered that the magic airship was much faster than a flying broomstick, and even had interdimensional technology, but Cole couldn't use it now. Don't dare to use it at will. If this world is discovered by a mage, it will be destroyed. From Mira's mouth, Cole can understand that the world of mages is ruthless plunder. Low-level creatures have no dignity. As long as they have no value, they can only serve as fertilizer in the potion field. However, through Cole's analysis, the kinetic energy technology can still be applied to flying broomsticks. After exchanging a set of materials, Cole began to make the core of the broomstick. Blue light flashed, and an exquisite broom appeared in Cole's hand. The blue handle and the magic gold thread were in it. It was simply a work of art. Riding on the broomstick he made by himself, Cole flew in the sky of Black Manor, performing various turning and upside-down movements. Cole's tests helped him understand the performance of the broom. Utilizing a new kinetic energy core, the broomstick's speed has reached 200 miles per hour. As far as Cole knows, no company has done this so far. The fastest light wheel series at present is only 120 miles per hour, and the steering function is far worse than my own. Isn't this a dimensionality reduction attack? Cole can already predict how much repercussions this broom will cause in the wizarding world. High speed is only one aspect, the most important thing is sensitivity. The existence of the magic circle allows the broomstick to control the steering as desired even at high speeds. This is the core competitiveness. Back in the room, Cole called right over and told him to build a broomstick factory. As long as there was core kinetic energy, broomsticks could be manufactured like an assembly line. However, Cole ordered that the speed of the broom be graded first. The speed of 200 miles cannot be released yet. To make money, you have to be able to grasp people's hearts. If you are the king of bombs as soon as you come out, wizards will not cherish them in the future. The castrated version is enough to drive these wizards crazy for a while. After finishing today's work and leaving the rest to the people below, Cole lay leisurely on the sofa, thinking about Draco. Now that it has started, I think Harry Potter has already been exposed to the wizarding world. As for Dursley, with Dumbledore here, Harry will go to school no matter what. Cole didn't want to get involved, but Old B was very cautious. Cole only remembered roughly what happened when Harry entered Hogwarts. Anyway, Senior Tom would cause trouble and would be resurrected in the end. However, Senior Tom's resurrection does not pose a threat to Cole. Cole should think carefully about how to use Senior Tom's return to benefit the Black family. I don't think the Senior will be angry. After all, I am still a junior, and the Senior should be able to understand me. If you don't understand, just send Senior Tom back. Why are you still fussing with someone who is gone? Cole was thinking wildly here, and suddenly there was a bang outside the window. Cole's eyes drifted past, and he saw a stupid owl shaking its head and struggling. Whose owl is so stupid? From the Lucius family. That's not right either. Lucius always sent house elves to Cole. As for other people, Cole never expected anyone to write to him. After standing up and opening the window, Cole noticed a thick letter tied at the owl's feet. He took it off and threw the owl out. The owl was circling, but Cole could see the dissatisfaction in his eyes. He took out his wand and pointed it at it, and the owl flew away in fright. Cole laughed, if the owl could talk it would be a curse. Grandit, 
You didn't even give a word of mouth when delivering the letter. I want to tell the other brothers and sisters that this family is a poor family, not even comparable to the Weasley family. Close black lens bracket. Of course Cole didn't know what the owl was thinking, he just thought it was funny. Opening the letter, Cole saw the Hogwarts school logo. A letter from Dumbledore. What can be said? Harry is Sirius's godson, not mine, not to mention that I have already removed Sirius. Doubtful. Cole opened the letter. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Principal. Albus Dumbledore, President of the International Confederation of Wizards, First Class Sir Merlin. Dear Mr. Martin Black, we are pleased to inform you that you have been admitted to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Attached is a list of required books and equipment. The school is scheduled to be at, and looking forward to your reply. Vice Principal. Minerva McGonagall. Cole opened the remaining four letters in confusion. They had the same content, but the names were different. Jerome, Ben, Darlene, Alice, plus Martin just now, all five of his children received notices from Hogwarts. How is this going? Is it wrong? Martin and the others are only 10 years old. Isn't the entry age for Hogwarts 11? The question in Cole's mind was not answered. What he didn't know was that in the Hogwarts principal's office, the sorting hat was talking. Old sheepy, those kids are not even in grade yet. Why did you send the notice? Dumbledore doesn't even know you did this. If he gets angry and burns you, that would be fun, ha 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 ha. The sheepskin scroll next to it couldn't speak, it just spread itself out, and a few words appeared on it. Their magic power far exceeds that of their peers and has exceeded the limit set. The master has said that such gifted schools can admit them exceptionally. Close black lens bracket. You old sheepskin, that disgusting guy Salazar is dead a long time ago, and you still call him master, Merlin's footskin, it's really disgusting. Godric is also disgusting. Close black lens bracket a few words appeared on the parchment scroll, which completely angered the sorting hat. A burst of curses sounded in the principal's office. Cole stared blankly at the five letters in his hand, a little confused. Logically speaking, Something that would arrive only next year was suddenly caught off guard this year. In fact, Cole knew that after Harry Potter returned to the wizarding world, Hogwarts would definitely not be stable in the next few years. For the safety of his children, Cole was ready to send Martin and the others to Durmstrang. Although in England, Durmstrang School of Witchcraft and Wizardry has a bad reputation, as it is mostly a place where dark wizards come out. But Cole knew that whether to become a dark wizard or not depends on one's character, not to mention that power is neither good nor bad. No matter how kind a person is, he will bite when pressed. Durmstrang College is one of the three largest wizarding schools in Europe, the other two are Hogwarts and Bobatons. The school is located in the far north of the European continent and is willing to accept international students from as far away as Bulgaria. Durmstrang School does not admit muggle-born students. If it weren't for the fact that most of the British pure blood wizards came from Hogwarts, families like Malfoy would prefer to send their children there. The principal, Igor Karkaroff, is also a top master of black magic. When it comes to black magic attainments, this wizard is no less than Dumbledore. The world thinks that Dumbledore is the most famous white wizard in the contemporary era, but few people know that Dumbledore has also made great achievements in black magic. After all, Dumbledore and Grindelwald were friends when they were young, and the two studied dark magic together. However, due to an accident, the two parted ways, and Dumbledore gave up his research on dark magic. In fact, Durmstrang is a co-ed school like Hogwarts and Bobatons, and its founder is a witch. Darlene and Alice can also go to Durmstrang. With Martin and the others taking care of them, no one will dare to bully them. It was just the sudden acceptance letter that disrupted Cole's plan, and Cole couldn't help but wonder if this was Dumbledore's conspiracy. He wanted to use his black family members as a ladder to the savior. Don't doubt Dumbledore's scheming. Cole knew that Dumbledore was responsible for the future Gryffindor trio. The Gryffindor trio, the savior Harry Potter, the clever girl Hermione, and the crazy Ronald. This is the team Dumbledore prepared for Harry. In fact, Harry didn't show much talent when he first entered the wizarding world. He even made a lot of jokes in Gryffindor because of his low self-esteem. To know the name of the savior, the little wizards who are enrolling in this semester have heard about it since childhood. Naturally, they had high expectations for Harry like this, 
but with subsequent contact, many young wizards were disappointed with this savior. Not only was he not talented in magic, he was also a troublemaker. If Dumbledore hadn't been behind him, Harry's school life would definitely have been difficult. Hermione Granger was born in the Muggle world, but has outstanding learning ability. She is the brains of the trio, and can also be said to be Harry and Ronald's nanny. What these two idiots did before was really not very smart. Ronald Weasley, born in the pure-blood Weasley family. The Weasley family is a star in the wizarding world, not because of anything else, but because they have many children. Seven children are enough to beat other pure-blood nobles. The most important thing is that the children of the Weasley family are very talented and all of them are talents. In Cole's memory, Ronald was not bad at all. It was because his brothers were so good that he had some low self-esteem since he was a child, so he never showed his talent. The only drawback is that Ronald doesn't seem very smart and always misses the mark at critical moments. Thinking back to what would happen to Harry in his first year at Hogwarts, Cole couldn't remember some details because it had been too long. But there is no big danger. Senior Tom possessed Quirrell just to get the Philosopher's Stone. In addition, he released the trolls into Hogwarts and killed a few unicorns. Creatures like trolls are thick-skinned and extremely powerful. They are indeed a threat to little wizards. Even if there are too many, an adult wizard cannot take them down. If Martin and other children go to Hogwarts, he still has to be careful. Cole is not worried either. After all, the magic power of these little guys is far higher than that of their peers. Cole is not good at teaching, and his own strength comes from Krypton Gold. But Mela is an orthodox mage and has received systematic education since childhood. Although the system is different from that of this world, the principles are the same. Martin has shown good control ability since the magic riot, and Mira has been training Martin since he was sensible. Cole has no prejudice against black magic and can accept it as long as it is power. This also leads to Martin not only having extraordinary magic power, but also a lot of black magic. It's really easy to deal with a brainless troll. As for Jerome, Cole knew that his son had been lazy since he was a child, but he couldn't resist his high talent. With scattered studies, Cole didn't need to worry about his strength. Not to mention Ban Na, who has suppressed the magic power since he was a child and has a strong thirst for knowledge. His progress can be said to be rapid. The two daughters are Cole's little cotton padded jackets. Not to mention other things, the magic props they carry are enough for them to protect themselves. Cole thought about it and suddenly realized that he didn't have to worry too much about the children getting hurt when they went to Hogwarts. In addition, Dumbledore was still at Hogwarts. Although Old B had selfish motives, he would not tolerate anything happening to his students in school. In addition, in the early stage, Senior Tom's attention will be on the savior Harry so Cole doesn't have to worry. Thinking of this, Cole actually felt that it was okay for a few children to go to Hogwarts. Hogwarts was still close to home, and if anything happened, Cole could handle it in time. Cole lay on the sofa and relaxed. The only worry now is whether Dumbledore will involve the Black family. The current Black family is not from Sirius's time. At the time of Sirius, there were only a few members of the Black family. Sirius did not like to deal with family affairs and wasted the family business. And no wizard wants to follow. But now the Black family not only has Cole in charge, but also Wright as a butler to help, and his team of wizards are stationed at Black Manor and Nocturne Alley all year round. The Black family is also present in the Ministry of Magic, and John's team is also a mainstay in the Auror Department. In a few years, Cole will even be able to promote John to the position of Director of the Auror Department. There are dozens of adult wizards in the Black family, all of whom have extraordinary fighting prowess. In the eyes of pure blood families, the current Black family is an existence that cannot be easily provoked. In the evening, Cole sat in his study, conceiving his business plan. First, register the company, which is under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Magic. Fudge is easy to deal with. Although this guy is greedy for money, as long as he accepts gold galleons, he will definitely do something for you. Father, we are back. Alice suddenly ran into the study without knocking on the door, and jumped directly on Cole. The little guy was quite heavy. My little cutie, did you have fun today? Alice looked at Cole with a smile, and then noticed that Martin and other little guys also came in. Unlike Alice, they were still a little afraid of Cole. I didn't dare to be so presumptuous in front of Cole. Father, we are back. Mother is preparing dinner downstairs. 
Martin said politely, a trace of envy flashed in his eyes, and of course Cole noticed it. I even saw that even the lazy Jerome had such a complicated expression. Cole thought that he usually didn't care much about the children, which made Martin and others more willing to get close to Mira. Come over here, let's talk about what fun things happened today. Darlene is a girl. She ran over as soon as she heard it, and Martin and Jerome followed. As for the last class, although his face was stubborn, it could be seen that he was very happy. Father, Draco also invited me to accompany him to Diagon Alley to buy books. He said that he needs to prepare a lot of things to go to Hogwarts. Martin adjusted his sleeves a little nervously. In front of Cole, Martin always seemed to be a police sergeant. Is it because he is afraid that he will not agree to go? Cole thought about it and he didn't seem to be that strict with Martin. Could it be that he was born to be repressed by his father's status? Father, when can we go to Hogwarts to study? Draco said there are many little wizards like us there. It would be fun to go to school together. The eldest daughter Darlene spoke now, with expectation in her eyes. It seemed that these children from home were really bored. How could they stay at home all day without contact with their peers? Maybe you can go to Hogwarts this year. What do you think this is? Cole picked up the letter on the table and waved it. Alice climbed directly on Cole's arm, snatched it off, and gave the letter to her eldest brother. Martin looked at the somewhat familiar seal. Where had he seen it today? Until he opened the letter, Martin couldn't believe it and shouted loudly, Father, this is the admission notice to Hogwarts. I saw it from Draco. This name belongs to class. Has class been admitted? When Ben heard his name appear on the Hogwarts admission notice, his calm little face became anxious. He grabbed the letter and smiled when he saw that it was indeed his name on it. Brother, where is mine? Where is mine? Alice anxiously asked Martin to look for her first. She moved around in Cole's arms, and Cole almost gave up. Alice, is your little brain full of energy? We were born on the same day and can go to class. We must be old enough. Jerome was not anxious at all, but it was interesting to watch the brothers and sisters fighting for it. After a while, under Martin's distribution, several children got their notices and read them word for word, all of them excited. Although they can be taught at home, it is obvious that these children cannot stay any longer. It is the age when they are curious and playful, and Hogwarts school has a huge attraction for them. As a result, the children discussed going to Diagon Alley together. Originally, Draco just invited Martin to go with him, but now the five of them know that they can also go to Hogwarts. I decided to go to Diagon Alley with Draco then. I wonder if Draco would be a little confused knowing that his purchasing team suddenly had so many people. That's right, when Cole decided to give the letters to the children, he had already decided to send them to Hogwarts. No matter what happens at Hogwarts in the future, fledglings always need experience, and Cole will not keep a few children tied to him. As a member of the Black family, you have to go through what you have to experience. In fact, Cole has not adapted to this kind of family elite education. After all, this is not how he grew up. But Mara was born into an orthodox noble family and was accepted as an apprentice by a mage. Everything she experienced was actually more in line with this wizarding world. As far as Cole knew, Martin, Jerome and Ben had received special training from Mela, and Mela always kept Cole from interfering in education. Mira thinks Cole is too kind, completely forgetting that Cole was also the one with blood on his hands in Nocturne Alley. In other words, Martin and the others have already seen life and death at the age of 10. For pure blood nobles, killing two or three dark wizards is nothing, as long as the tales are clean. As Cole's wife and the mistress of the Black family, Mara can naturally command the wizards of the Black family. Anyway, whatever Mela directed Wright to do in private, Wright would eventually report it to Cole. When it was known that Mira took Martin and the other three to Nocturne Alley and selected three people from the underground cell, all of them died in the end with traces of Avada on their bodies. Cole knew that his three sons had lives on their hands. That's not what made Cole angry. The wizarding world was originally about the jungle. When you are weak, anyone is qualified to kill you. What made Cole angry was that Mara actually let the three of them use Avada Kedavra, one of the three unforgivable curses. You must have murderous intent in mind when using Avatar. The most frightening thing about black magic is that when you use it, you will be unconsciously affected by negative emotions, and you may eventually lose your mind. Martin, Jerome and Ben are all still young. 
What if this murderous mood changes the temperament of several children? Unexpectedly, when Cole questioned Mira, Mira revealed the secret of the bloodline. Mira carried the blood of the Shadow Snake. Naturally, Martin's children also have alien bloodlines. In the wizarding world, there are many wizards with the bloodline of magical animals. The bloodline talents of Martin and others are brought by the Shadow Snake, which is their resistance to dark magic. In other words, Martin and others use black magic to block those negative emotions. On the contrary, because they are still children, Martin's murderous intention is very pure. He is also the most talented in dark magic among the three children. Listening to Mira saying that Martin has a good talent for black magic, Cole always felt a chill on his back for some reason. This kid won't take the path of killing his father to become enlightened, right? What if the third generation Dark Lord might be my son? If possible, Cole really wanted to ask the seniors in the Harry Potter world in the World Travel Group, what if his son becomes the Dark Lord? It was Mira who finally convinced Cole. In fact, Cole also knew that children born in pure blood wizard families would not be as naive as mixed blood wizards. Before entering Hogwarts, you will be taught more or less charms. Even if you are exposed to them, you can learn a lot. Mira believed that Martin and other children who were born into the Black family should bear certain responsibilities and should have no less experience. After all, parents cannot be by their side at all times, they must at least be able to protect themselves. It is under this concept that Martin, who is well behaved and even a little nervous in front of Cole, is indeed the noble son of the Black family and the future heir of the Black family in the eyes of outsiders. Martin has been to Nocturne Alley many times, and has been exposed to a lot of business there. Whether it is dark wizards or others, Martin's mental age is far beyond that of his peers. Although Jerome is lazy, he is also a ruthless person. After Mara's story, Cole actually knew that in Jerome's eyes, nothing else mattered except his own family. Jerome was also the first to take action and the most decisive among the three brothers. Even Mara was surprised at the time that Jerome, who originally seemed the most harmless, would have such a side. After finishing dealing with one of his own, Jerome also asked Martin and Ben if they needed help. After finishing it, he went back to sleep, he was sleepy. As for Ben, after an avatar passed, he was actually curious about the body of the dark wizard and asked why the Mela people died. Life is so fragile, is it meaningless? Mira, a loving mother, gave Ben a hard blow on the spot and said, this is the meaning of life. You know it hurts, but your mother can't cure you, you brat. The classmate nodded his head again and again, no longer daring to ask what the meaning of life is. Putting aside the doubts in his heart for the future, he would not dare to mess with Mira, as his own mother was really beating her up. In this way, the three Martins officially completed Mira's first mission. Of course, when Cole found out, he was still a little angry. After all, the child was only 10 years old. He even thought about how the lovely Alice would cry if she went through this. Cole forcefully stopped Mira from doing this to the two girls, Darlene and Alice, and waited at least two years until they grew up. Mara happily agreed, turned around and took Darlene and Alice into Nocturne Alley. When he saw Alice's tearful eyes when they came out, Cole knew that this was the end of the matter. All she could do was coax Alice, but Mara and Darlene looked like they were mentally retarded. They would not tell Alice how much fun they had just now, and later Alice begged them not to tell their father. After going through everything in his mind, Cole looked at the children with relief, regardless of whether this was Dumbledore's conspiracy or not. He has the ability to protect the Black family and Mira, as well as several children. If Senior Tom was smart, he wouldn't have targeted the Black family when he was at his weakest. Wouldn't it be a good idea to deal with Harry, the Savior, and resurrect himself first? But if Tom learns to be stubborn, let's see who is more capable. Let's go down to eat and tell your mother the news. Cole came to the restaurant with a few little guys, and a large table of delicious food had been set up. It was said to be delicious food, but in fact it only had grilled chicken pancakes, some fruits and desserts. Cole's ability to adapt is pretty good. He has gotten used to it over the years and has forgotten what hot pot tastes like. Cole was too lazy to think about what to eat. This may have followed Jerome, who was too lazy to think about things that he was not interested in. No, it was Jerome who followed him, and a son follows his father, right? Alice was the first to go to Mira with her notice. Amidst the chatter, Mira finally figured things out. Looking at Cole, he said, 
Don't you have to be eleven to enter Hogwarts? They are not old enough. Is there something wrong? When Mira said this, the happiness of Martin and others was instantly cut off, and the smiles froze on their faces. Alice's eyes were even more wet, and she looked at Cole pitifully, Merlin, who can resist this? Don't worry, since the notices have arrived, even if they were sent by mistake, your father I can still send you to Hogwarts. After all, our family is still the school director, right? Cole smiled firmly at Alice, and finally gave Mira a wink, telling her not to worry, everything would be on her own. Yeah yeah yeah. Alice's cheers sounded in the restaurant, and the Black family happily enjoyed their dinner. After the meal, Cole took several children in the study to write a reply, stating that he was willing to attend Hogwarts. One person chose an owl and sent the letter. In fact, you can definitely use one to deliver letters, but the children insist on sending their own, so Cole will let them do it. Anyway, the Black family is not short of such money. In the Hogwarts headmaster's office, Dumbledore looked at the reply on his desk in confusion. He no longer had the appetite to drink the earthworm juice next to him. It had been a busy day and Dumbledore was preparing to deal with the students' replies. Suddenly, he discovered that the names in the five letters were all from the Black family. Dumbledore had also investigated this class and knew a lot of information. It was originally obscurus, but was cured by Cole using unknown magic. After seeing that scene, Dumbledore boldly guessed that Cole got it when he was wandering in India. Dumbledore was planning to go for a walk around the pyramids whenever he was not busy. Maybe you can even pick up treasures from ancient wizards. But now Dumbledore had a headache when he looked at the letter in front of him. None of Cole's children were old enough. What's more, the admission notice needs to be stamped by him personally. Why doesn't he remember Blake? Dumbledore turned to look at the shelf next to him. The candlelight shone through his glasses. In Dumbledore's eyes, the sorting hat was trembling. Merlin, I knew he could find it. Old sheepskin, please come out and explain. This has nothing to do with me. Close black lens bracket. The parchment scroll was motionless, as if dead, and only the hat was left shouting on the shelf. Dumbledore, not me, it was Lao Sheepskin who did it. He said those kids were too talented and it was that guy Salazar who set them up. Close black lens bracket. The hat shouted, but Dumbledore said nothing. He raised his hand and cast a curse. The sorting hat instantly shut up, and the principal's office finally fell silent. Dumbledore also knew who was behind this. As for Salazar's plan mentioned by the sorting hat, Dumbledore was a little more wary. As the founder of Hogwarts and one of the four legendary wizards, Dumbledore cannot be underestimated. Just thinking about what will happen in school this year, a few young Blakes should not disrupt their plans. Looking at the reply, Dumbledore could understand what Cole meant. He sighed and put the letter in the desk drawer. In Diagon Alley, Mira and her family stood excitedly on the street. After all, she was a woman. As soon as Mira heard that she could go shopping, she suddenly became interested. It happened that Martin and the others still needed to buy things they needed for school, so Cole came with his family. The Lucius family was also there. After that day, Martin wrote a letter to Draco, saying that he and his younger siblings were also going to Hogwarts to study. Draco jumped up with joy. Now that he had a friend to accompany him to school, Draco was so happy. As for Goyle and Crab, they were just followers. Draco had never thought that these two people had the same status as himself since he was a child. Only Martin, the black cousins, could be his friends. Martin, will you buy an owl? I want to buy a raven, but my father won't let me. Draco spoke softly, looking at Lucius who was talking to Cole from time to time. It was obvious that he was dissatisfied with Lucius's decision, but there was nothing he could do about it. Father said we can choose any pet. Anyway, if we want to deliver the letter, we have an owl at home. After Martin said this, Draco looked envious. Regarding Martin and others being able to freely choose their own pets, Draco asked why Uncle Cole was so nice. At this time, Mira and Narcissa were not in the mood to take care of the children for the time being, and went directly to Ms. Prim Burnell's beauty pharmacy. Mira's beauty naturally doesn't require these, but she can't resist this curiosity. She also wants to see the difference in beauty potions in this world. Cole didn't stop him and went directly to Ollivander's wand store with Lucius and the children. As soon as the doorbell rang, Cole walked in and saw Ollivander sticking his head out from among the pile of rubble. Oh! 
Mr. Black, Walnut, Dragon's Heartstring, Ten and a Quarter Inches. That's a good wand, not easy to bend. Cole looked at Ollivander emerging from countless wand boxes and smiled inwardly. In England, basically all wizards' wands come from here. Ollivander, the wand master, has a really good memory, but the wand he just mentioned was only used by the original Cole, and now Cole has changed the equipment. Mr. Malfoy, you are here too. Looking at Lucius who came in later, Ollivander did not tell the origin of Lucius's wand. No one would ignore the cane that Lucius would carry wherever he went. Is there something wrong with your wands? Mr. Ollivander, this time you are choosing wands for the children. They have all received notices from Hogwarts. Ollivander's slightly dim eyes looked at the children who followed him through his glasses, and he smiled after a long time. Time flies so fast. It seems like yesterday that you came here to choose a wand. Now it's time to choose a wand for your child. Who comes first? Little Black or Little Malfoy? The slovenly Ollivander obviously made Draco feel a little uncomfortable, and he even felt that the old man was nervous. I'll go first, Mr. Ollivander. My name is Martin Blake. Martin stood up in a small suit. Those who didn't know better thought he was the oldest among these children, except for the 11 year old dragon Draco. Ollivander smiled, picked up the tape measure, and measured Martin asking whether he was left-handed or right-handed. Not only did several children not understand why height and arm length were measured, Cole also didn't understand. Wizards generally don't change their wands. They are things that little wizards have used since childhood. What's the point of measuring these? Cole could only suspect that this was a ploy by the Ollivander family to show off their family's expertise and monopolize the wand business in the wizarding world. While measuring, Ollivander paid attention to several children of the Black family. Apart from the Weasley family, Ollivander had never seen any pure blood family have so many children. Well, the talent is extremely powerful, then try this, you would, the nerve of the dragon, most suitable for powerful wizards. As Ollivander spoke, he put a wand into Martin's hand. As Martin waved it, the wand boxes in the room began to fly, and even the wands at the back began to vibrate. Unlike other little wizards who can't control the wand, Martin's talent has been known to everyone before. Seeing this scene, Draco was about to jump up with excitement, and Lucius looked dissatisfied. Mr. Ollivander, I think it suits me well, doesn't it? Martin felt the wand in his hand and chose it directly. The next one is Jerome. With the same operation, all the wands in Ollivander's store can find the right owner. The success of Ben, Darlene and Alice simply gave Ollivander no sense of accomplishment at all. He liked picky little wizards the most, but the wands of several young wizards in the Black family were all suitable. Okay, but remember, it's the wand that picks the wizard, not the wizard that picks the wand. Ollivander's nonsense was directly ignored by Martin and others. It was not the first time for them to come into contact with the wand, and they were not that excited. Draco was next, standing up with an excited look on his face. After some manipulation, Draco got his own wand, made of hawthorn wood and unicorn hair, which was exactly 10 inches. Seeing Draco waving his wand, Cole couldn't help but sigh. Although Draco usually looked arrogant, he was still very kind at heart. You must know that none of Martin's palms are made of unicorn hair. Sometimes the material of the wand can reveal a person's heart. For example, Martin's yew tree is often associated with death by wizards. The yew tree is regarded as the tree of death, and the priests in certain places also regard the yew tree as a symbol of eternal life and immortality. Several children were discussing their wands here, and Cole didn't notice two people, one large and one small, standing outside the window. The three-meter-tall Hagrid patted his moleskin coat, looked at Lucius through the glass with disgust and said, There will always be annoying wizards these evil wizards should go to Azkaban. When Harry entered Diagon Alley for the first time, he was still staring curiously at Ollivander's wand shop, and his face looked curious when he heard Hagrid's words. Hagrid, do wizards have bad guys too? Of course Harry, some bad wizards are born to harm others. You must remember to stay away from them. Come on, let's go to Gringotts to get the money first. The smell of Malfoy is always unpleasant. Hagrid led Harry away with a look of disgust on his face. Harry followed Hagrid, smelling the natural scent on Hagrid's body and wondering in his mind, is there anyone with a stronger scent than you? Of course the kind-hearted Harry would not say it out loud, but
but Hagrid was the best person he had met in these years. Cole who came out of Ollivanders is really big-headed. Several children had a lot of fun today. One moment they ran to the window to look at the flying broomstick, and the other they went to the dessert shop to eat cones. Cole directly took out a handful of gold galleons from his arms, handed it to Martin, and asked him to take his younger brothers and sisters to buy it. Although Draco had no worries about food and clothing on weekdays, he felt envious when he saw Uncle Cole giving Martin such a large amount of money. Just like that, Draco looked at Lucius with earnest eyes. With a calm expression on his face, Lucius took out three gold galleons from his arms and handed them to Draco with a teasing expression on Cole's face. It's useless for a kid to get so much money. Draco doesn't usually need it. It's not Cole's fault. In fact, the Malfoy family is very rich. Lucius has always been a rich man in front of the pure blood nobles in the past. In fact, few people know that Lucius has a bit of grandit potential. Lucius is not ambiguous at all when it comes to the necessary expenses for the family. Whether it's wizard robes or other magic props, Lucius has always spent money like water, but when it comes to small places where he spends money, Lucius can't bear to part with it. Looking at the backs of the children, Cole smiled and said, I told Martin to let them go to Mira and the others after shopping, and we will go hide for a while. The two of them walked toward a remote part of the alley, and entered Nocturne Alley after twists and turns. In fact, Nocturne Alley and Diagon Alley are very close, and familiar wizards know the route to Nocturne Alley. It's just that Nocturne Alley has always been a gathering place for dark wizards. Despite the Black family's management and control over the years, there are still wizards who delay this place. Bloodshed often occurs in Nocturne Alley, and everything is for profit. However, the Ministry of Magic is too lazy to deal with these matters, and only the Black family's wizard team handles them. It can be regarded as a contribution to the Ministry of Magic. On Martin and Draco's side, several people were holding cones in their hands and standing on the street without looking for Mira and Narcissa. The children finally had no adult supervision. The rare freedom makes Martin and others very excited. After all, they are still children. Martin. Look at that idiot standing in front of the window of the magical beast store. He still has eyes. He looks like a half-blood wizard. He doesn't even have the guts to go in and take a look. The fool in Draco's words at this time was Harry who was separated from Hagrid. When he came out of Gringotts, Hagrid said that he had something to buy and asked Harry to wait for him. Harry had never seen so many magical animals before, and he stood in front of the display window and was stunned. Harry happened to hear someone talking about him, and when he looked back, he saw that it was the group of children who had been in Ollivanders. Draco looked at Harry who dared to stare at him, and not wanting to embarrass himself in front of his cousin, he stepped forward directly. Draco Malfoy. What's your name? Draco raised his neck, his platinum hair sticking to his scalp, shining in the sun, which made Harry frown. In his impression, only Cousin Dudley could do this. Hello, my name is Harry, and I'm not a fool, I'm just looking. Draco's eyes showed shock when he heard Harry's name. Are you the Harry from the Potter family? Potter family? My name is Harry Potter. As for the family you are talking about, I don't know. When Harry heard the word family, he was still a little unfamiliar. No one told him that he had a family. Hagrid only told him the names of his father and mother. Draco stepped forward excitedly, lifted Harry's hair, and saw the lightning scar. He had known Harry Potter's name since he was a child. People around him said that he was the savior and defeated the Dark Lord. Draco had always felt that Harry should be powerful and worthy of being his friend. Draco Malfoy, you deserve to be my friend. Draco proudly stretched out his hand, wanting to say hello to his long-standing friend. Although Harry disliked the attitude of the man in front of him, he was very happy to hear that Draco was willing to make friends with him after not having friends for a long time. Their little hands were clasped together. Martin looked at him in shock at the thought of someone making friends like this. Although Draco was kind-hearted, Martin also knew that few people could stand Draco's arrogance. Apart from Goyle and Crab, Martin couldn't think of anyone who could tolerate Draco's temper. Of course, Draco's arrogance will not appear in the Black family. In fact, Draco has always been a little inferior in front of Martin and others. Who makes the Black family not inferior to the Malfoy family, Martin's talents also make Draco a little desperate. They are my cousins. He is Martin, 
This is Jerome, and Ben, Darlene and Alice. They are all from the Black family. Like us, they are all pure blood. Draco took Harry to introduce Martin and others. In his mind, Harry was a member of the Potter family and should be a pure-blooded member of them. Hello. Harry was a little shy, and he was a little uncomfortable with Draco's enthusiasm, but he was still very happy inside. You still, Harry, I heard your name, do you want to come with us? Seeing as you are also a person. As the eldest brother, Martin invited Harry to join the team. He had heard of Harry's name and knew from Cole's mouth that Harry was the godson of Sirius's uncle. He could be considered a member of their black family, but that uncle was deleted from the family tree by his father, and Martin had never seen him. Harry happily agreed. He had no friends since he was a child, but he didn't expect that after entering the wizarding world, he would still be able to meet people who were willing to make friends with him. Draco took Harry walking down the street and saw a broom shop. Draco proudly said that his father also bought him one. Through Draco's introduction, Harry also learned that wizards could fly to the sky on a broomstick, and Harry's eyes also showed a trace of yearning. Martin followed behind and did not reveal his relationship with Harry. Adult matters should be handled by them. After walking around a lot, the relationship between Harry and Draco became much better. Harry understood Draco's character. Although Draco seemed arrogant on the surface, as a friend, Draco was very enthusiastic. Draco rolled his eyes in order to show off in front of his new friends. Martin, we've already seen Diagon Alley. Why don't we go to Nocturne Alley? My father took me with me last time. Martin nodded in agreement, although Nocturne Alley is notorious in the wizarding world and is a gathering place for dark wizards. But for Martin and the other children of the Black family, Nocturne Alley is their own back garden and there is no danger at all. Although dark wizards are indeed dangerous, Martin and the others have seen blood before and are not afraid at all, not to mention that there are wizards from the Black family in Nocturne Alley. A large number of people can be called over with just a greeting, and the magic items on his body are enough to protect them. With confidence in his heart, Martin led several young wizards into an unknown alley. Harry followed Draco, Martin and others into Nocturne Alley for some unknown reason. When they entered Nocturne Alley, the sky became dark. Although there are only a few walls between them, Diagon Alley is a bustling scene, but Nocturne Alley looks dark. Several wizards on the road are wearing black robes, covering their faces. I walked in a hurry, walking along the street, looking around from time to time. This strange sight frightened Harry a little. Draco, what is this place? You didn't know this, right? This is Nocturne Alley, a place where British dark wizards often come. Draco was not afraid at all but introduced it with great interest. What are dark wizards? Are wizards different too? Like bad guys and good guys? Harry had not been taught the difference between black wizards and white wizards, so he was just a blank slate at this point. Harry, wizards should never be distinguished purely on the basis of good or bad. Do you know the three unforgivable curses? The Ministry of Magic prohibits wizards from using these spells. Martin interrupted and he suddenly realized that Harry was like a child who didn't understand anything. If he were a child in the wizarding world, he wouldn't ask such a question. Just like Malfoy and them, when they reach a certain age, their families will teach them some truths. Maybe it was because Harry had been staying in the muggle world, and Martin could understand it. After all, there was no adult to guide Harry. Then why do we call them dark wizards? Harry asked, not understanding. That's because they use black magic to hurt others. In fact, most wizards know black magic. Even spells banned by the Ministry of Magic are used by many people in private. Just like Dumbledore, he is also a master of dark magic. The only difference is that Principal Dumbledore will not use dark magic to harm innocent people. Martin explained a few words, and then Draco took over. Draco told Harry that dark wizards had been kidnapping young wizards for experiments and many young wizards had done something wrong. After Draco's description, Harry was a little scared. He didn't expect that the wizarding world could be so scary. Dursley once told him that there would be traffickers who would steal children. I didn't expect that the wizarding world is the same as the muggle world. Okay, don't be afraid. They don't dare to attack us. Besides, we can protect ourselves in the future if we learn the spell. Draco looked at Harry's scared expression and felt a sense of superiority in his heart. Several children suddenly appeared in Nocturne Alley, and they quickly attracted attention. 
Many wizards coming and going showed greedy eyes. Harry saw an old witch with white hair smiling at him, and Harry was so scared that he hid behind Martin. As for why he was hiding behind Martin, it wasn't because Draco always said he was awesome, but Harry always felt that Martin was more reliable. There were quite a few people who had ill intentions towards the children, but most of them avoided looking at Martin and left in a hurry. It was suspicious for several children to appear in Nocturne Alley, let alone someone who knew Martin. No one dared to mess with the young master of the Black family in Nocturne Alley. But there are always those who are short-sighted. At this time, an adult wizard in tattered robes staggered over. He had an unkempt beard and looked like a wizard who had been wandering for a long time. Children, are you lost and can't find your mother? The gloomy and hoarse voice startled Draco, and then Draco felt that he had lost face in front of his new friend, so he took out his wand and pointed it at him. Stay away from us, you filthy thing. Ha 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 ha, that's interesting. Children, do you want to go to a nice place with me? The adult wizard laughed, not thinking that the young wizard could pose any threat to him, and rubbed his hands together excitedly. He completely didn't notice the dead wizard's expression in the distance. At this time, he was still immersed in the idea of what to do with these children, and maybe they could sell a lot of gold galleons. Martin noticed the movement of wizards in the distance, and wrote a code word on his hand, telling the Black family wizards not to take action for the time being, and they could handle it themselves. Several children of the Black family communicated in their eyes. Jerome, brother, please deal with it quickly, it's really troublesome. Close black lens bracket. Ban, brother, leave it to me. The spell I newly learned is very powerful. Close black lens bracket. Darlene, boring, I should have gone shopping with my mother for a nice dress. Close black lens bracket. Alice, big brother, brother, can I have a new toy? Close black lens bracket. Martin shook his head helplessly. His younger brothers and sisters were not fuel efficient, but it made him, the eldest brother, worried. Especially Alice, when was such a lovely sister, now she has become like this. Martin, don't mess around, leave it to me. Close black lens bracket in the disappointed eyes of Ben and Alice, Martin turned his head forcefully to look at Draco's performance. Be presumptuous, let me teach you an unforgettable lesson, devil flame. Draco shouted, waving his wand in his hand, and a black flame emerged from the tip of the wand, rising with the wind, and a black flame shot straight out. Armor protection. The adult wizard is not useless. He blocked Draco's attack with just one spell without even a ripple. Ha 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 ha, not bad, not bad, very talented, good material. Draco released his strongest spell so far. There was not much magic left in him. At first glance, it didn't cause any harm. He was a little flustered and embarrassed. Tangled with thorns. A large pile of thorns suddenly appeared on the ground and headed towards Draco. Adult wizards also knew how to deal with it quickly. If it attracted other people's attention, it would be troublesome. Seeing that Draco had nowhere to dodge, he still stood in front of Harry without flinching. The honor of the Malfoy family did not allow him to make such a cowardly move. The flames are blazing. Martin's voice came, burning the thorns halfway, and the heat hit Draco and Harry's faces, and they looked on in shock. Brother, leave it to me, the scythe of shadow. Ben jumped out directly, magic power poured into the wand, and a black crescent moon formed in front of him, flying directly forward. The wind driven by this crescent moon made the adult wizard a little scared. He couldn't imagine that a young wizard could release such a powerful spell. The adult wizard rolled to the side, and a black magic was emitted, but Jerome threw a badge to block it. This is Auror equipment, with its own armor protection charm, and is the standard equipment of John's team. Idiot class, snake of shadows. With an innocent smile on her face, Alice took out her wand. A black snake suddenly appeared next to the adult wizard, and its two-meter long body suddenly wrapped around her legs. Ban didn't say anything, and controlled the crescent moon that had not yet disappeared to turn with his hands, directly cutting off the head and rolling it to the ground. In just ten seconds, the battle was over, leaving only Draco and Harry standing there blankly, looking at the scene in front of them. This small battle in Nocturne Alley did not arouse the minds of many wizards. Some wizards already knew the outcome when they saw Martin's face. In Nocturne Alley, if you dare to mess with the Black family, it will be more serious than risking your life. Most dark wizards know that if you cause trouble in Nocturne Alley, the Ministry of Magic will not care about you, 
but the Black Family Wizard team will chase you to the ends of the earth. Before Draco and Harry could take a closer look at the body, several wizards in black robes with gold threads suddenly appeared, and one of them directly picked up the shroud and covered the body. The remaining people used clean water spells to wash the floor, and the wizards used spells to remove traces to eliminate traces of magic in this place to avoid future troubles. The operation is smooth and smooth, and you will be a veteran at first glance. Master, miss, leave the rest to us. Martin knew the wizard in front of him. Richie was the captain of the Nocturne Alley wizard team and a senior wizard. He was as powerful as Light John and his reputation in Nocturne Alley was as good as John's. Please Uncle Rich, don't tell father. Martin didn't want Cole to know what happened today. In fact, what he didn't know was that no matter what happened, these wizards would report it in the end. Their loyalty was unquestionable, and there were some things Cole just turned a blind eye to. Martin walked up to Draco and Harry, looked at their grinning lips, and said with a smile. What's wrong? Are you scared? How is that possible? Martin, don't look down on people. I will not be frightened by such a small scene. I am a member of the Malfoy family. Not to be outdone, Draco didn't want to be looked down upon in front of Martin, so he forced himself to forget the scene just now. As for Harry, Martin found that this child from the Muggle world actually behaved better than Draco, with no fear in his eyes. Well, Martin didn't want to leave a bad impression in front of his new friends. Harry, there are bad people in the Muggle world. Just like some wizards, they always have bad intentions. You have to be careful in the future, but Hogwarts is still very safe. Harry nodded obediently, he already had his own ability to distinguish some things. Yes Martin, but don't you need to call the police when something like this happens? Draco looked at Harry confused. What are the police? Horrors in the muggle world. Draco, who thought he had guessed it, smiled disdainfully and said, This is not something that happened in front of the Aurors. These guys didn't bother to care, not to mention we didn't use those spells. Draco meant that in the wizarding world, as long as the unforgivable curse was not used in front of the Auror, the Ministry of Magic would not care what the wizard did. Of course Draco knows the power of the three unforgivable curses, but he is not yet exposed to such powerful curses at his age, he is still young. Little did he know that Martin and others next to him had used the unforgivable curse much more powerfully. Harry, you don't understand the wizarding world now, you will know it later. Martin didn't explain much, and then took Draco and Harry to Nocturne Alley. In fact, Nocturne Alley is not less prosperous than Diagon Alley and there are even more people in Nocturne Alley than Diagon Alley, but these dark wizards come and go in a hurry. After a transaction is made in Nocturne Alley, the dark wizard will leave quickly to prevent anyone from targeting him. There are many shops in Nocturne Alley that are not suitable for Draco and Harry to enter, so Martin just stood outside and introduced them. Martin pointed to a shop in the middle of the street and deliberately teased Draco. Draco, what do you think that store sells? Draco has long been aware of Martin's bad side. Just now, Martin took him into a store and lied to him that it sold magical animals and could also accept orders for dragons. Draco was so excited that he rushed in. As soon as he entered, he saw an opal-eyed dragon's head hanging on the wall. Then the cabinet was full of dragon eyes, dragon hearts, dragon skins, good guys. Draco didn't know it and thought he had entered a slaughterhouse. Draco expected to see a live dragon but stared at Martin with disappointed eyes. In the end, Martin bought dragon leather gloves to make amends. Of course, Harry also gave him a pair, and Harry was so grateful that he almost burst into tears. He said that no one had ever given him a gift. Draco curled his lips and said teasingly, Martin, who doesn't know that your store has the most stores in Nocturne Alley? This is your store again, and you still want to play tricks on me? Why are you kidding me? In fact, that store sells broomsticks. They have the latest products from major broom companies, including Seven Stars. Speaking of this, Draco became interested, so he took Harry and walked directly in. The doorbell rang, and the wizard inside looked at the visitor fiercely. When I saw the two children, I was still confused until I saw Martin, Jerome and several other members of the Black family behind them. He finally put away his fierce gaze and turned to a smile, although this smile was a bit scary. Bring out the newest brooms. With Martin's greeting, Draco's eyes were dazzled by the brooms from various major companies on the table, and he introduced them to Harry while looking at them. I don't know if it's genetics or something, 
The amazing thing is that Harry is also interested in this broom that can take wizards to heaven. The two of them were chattering like this. The two little girls, Darlene and Alice, were already impatient and left to play in their own little paradise. Finally, Martin reminded the time, and Draco was horrified to find that he had gotten the better of him. Looking at Draco's look, Martin couldn't stop laughing. Draco was like a mouse to a cat to Uncle Lucius. It was only after Martin promised to explain to Draco that Draco dared to go back. Unexpectedly, as soon as they went out, they saw Cole and Lucius standing on the street. Looking at Lucius's eyes, Draco wanted to wet his pants. Don't come here yet, Draco, you don't look like the Malfoy family at all. If Martin and the others weren't here today, do you know that you would have killed yourself? Draco walked tremblingly in front of Lucius and lowered his head. I'm sorry, father. Lucius ignored him, turned around, his face changed, and he looked at Martin with a smile on his face. Martin, you are indeed the pride of the black family. You can be so powerful at a young age. Cole, you have given birth to a good son. Cole thought to himself. Looking at you like this, someone who didn't know better would have thought he was your son. Okay, Lucius, it's just a small matter, don't blame Draco, he is also very good. After hearing Cole's praise, Draco raised his head and looked at Uncle Cole's face. Draco thought how great it would be if Uncle Cole was his father. At this time, Lucius looked at Martin, thinking how great it would be if Martin were his son. If Cole knew what Lucius was thinking, he would just say that you are thinking nonsense. In this way, Malfoy and his son were brought back to Diagon Alley by Cole. As for Harry, neither Cole nor Lucius said much. Because he was outside, Lucius didn't lose his temper, at least not in front of Cole. Mira and Narcissa had had enough shopping. Seeing the look in Cole's eyes, Mira knew that Martin might be in trouble, but even if Mira knew what happened just now, she wouldn't care. Mira can do anything as long as she can keep her children safe. Oh, who is this young gentleman? Mira saw Harry hiding behind with round eyes. Harry looked uneasy now, like a little mouse. Mother, this is Harry Potter, our new friend. Martin quickly explained. Hello Ms. Black. Harry still greeted her politely. After all, this was the first time he saw such a dazzling lady and he didn't dare to be rude. Hello Harry, it seems that you two are getting along very well. Come on Alice, mother has picked out a nice little dress for you. Mira turned her head and looked at her little baby Alice. Dressing up the little princess still took some effort. Alice was a little reluctant. Although she also wanted to remind her mother that skirts were not allowed in Hogwarts, she couldn't resist her mother's enthusiasm. Damn it Malfoy, what are you doing, let go of Harry. Thunderous shouts rang out, and Hagrid was seen striding over, staring at Lucius with an angry look on his face, and walked to Harry like a hen guarding her chicks. Lucius frowned, his ears almost deafened, and he looked at the big man in front of him speechlessly. He even wondered if the big man had a brain the size of a walnut. What could he do to the little wizard in broad daylight? With me here, you dirty and disgusting Malfoy can't even think of bullying Harry. No one spoke. Hagrid was chattering alone, looking at Lucius and Draco fiercely. Even Cole didn't even get a few good looks. Hagrid, wait a minute, Mr. Malfoy didn't do anything to me. Draco protected me just now. Harry quietly tugged at Hagrid's mole robe, trying to calm the big man down. Harry, you can't be so naive. There are not many good people in the Malfoy family. They were once Death Eaters. They might want to harm you. Hey, you sloppy big guy, you must have troll blood, no wonder you have no brains, Harry, you can't stay with such people. Unable to bear Hagrid's malice toward Lucius, Draco stood up and cursed Hagrid. Look, you are indeed a member of the Malfoy family. Harry, let's go. Dumbledore has told me to keep you away from these people. Hagrid pulled Harry away unsteadily, without any regard for Harry's wishes. But Harry was like a little chicken, unable to resist Hagrid, who had giant blood, and could only look at his new friends Draco and Martin reluctantly. Why did this big man take Harry away? He is a member of the Potter family and is a pure blood like us. He shouldn't stay with that kind of person. Draco complained, feeling extremely disgusted with Hagrid. After all, Harry was his new recognized friend. Okay, Draco, keep your manners and avoid interacting with them in the future. It really stains my eyes. Lucius adjusted his robes, not caring about the conflict just now. He was not a fool. 
Hagrid was Dumbledore's diehard loyalist. Hagrid's behavior represents Dumbledore's wishes to a certain extent. Cole smiled and looked at each other. Both of them understood the situation somewhat. This is also the reason why the two of them pretended not to see Harry just now. Of course, Cole would not interfere too much with the friendship between children. As for Dumbledore's plans, Cole didn't care. If Dumbledore had any sense, he would know better than to involve the Black family. How dare he, Martin, tell me how dare he. Draco was unwilling to talk to Martin, but he didn't know that Martin had already seen the twists and turns. Even from Cole's few words, he could understand the Black family's attitude towards Harry. Okay, Draco, are you done? Draco didn't dare to speak for a moment, so he could only follow Martin into the clothing store. At some point, Cousin Martin's words could always calm Draco down. Maybe it was because he had been beaten too much, or maybe it was because in front of Martin, Draco had nothing to be proud of. At this time, Harry was pulled to the front of the pet store and rubbed his wrist. Although he was a little angry, he was Hagrid after all. Hagrid. Why are you doing this to Draco and the others? They are all very powerful people. Thinking of the spell cast by Martin and others just now, Harry was not only not afraid, but even a little yearned for it. The power of the spell has already made Harry yearn for Hogwarts. When he goes to school, he can become as powerful as Martin and the others. At this time, Harry had not thought that Martin and the others, who were also freshmen and had not been to Hogwarts yet, would still have such powerful power. Harry remembered that Hagrid said that his parents were also wizards. If his parents were still alive, he would also be able to learn magic spells. Harry was a little disappointed, but he didn't expect Hagrid to directly pull Harry's shoulders over and look at Harry seriously. Harry, you have to know that the Malfoy family are all Death Eaters. James and Lily sacrificed themselves to fight against that person. You have to stay away from them, they will definitely harm you in the future. Looking at Hagrid's huge body, Harry couldn't express the question in his mind. He wanted to ask why would they harm me in the future? I can only nod and follow Hagrid's wishes. Hagrid smiled with satisfaction, feeling like he had pulled Harry back from the cliff. When you get to Hogwarts, we will help you. Professor McGonagall also cares about you. She is the head of Gryffindor. Gryffindor is definitely the best among the four colleges. Unlike Slytherin, which is a place dedicated to dark wizards, you can't go there because you will be bullied. Harry nodded. Although he still didn't know what Gryffindor meant, he could guess that Hogwarts might be divided into four houses. Just like a muggle school, Cousin Dolly can go to Smelting Middle School, but he can only go to a public school. Even the school uniforms are changed from Dolly's old school uniforms. After Hagrid finished speaking, he took Harry into the pet store with satisfaction and let Harry choose the pet he liked. In the end, Harry chose the owl that was always white. The moment Harry saw her, he had already thought of a name, Hedwig, a lady's name, isn't it? On platform 9 and 3 quarters of London Station, the Black family was ready, and of course Cole and his family entered the platform. Looking at the Hogwarts Express in front of him, Cole was thinking about what the train was powered by, and that although it didn't look big, he remembered that the space inside the train was quite large. Father, we're getting in the car. Martin's voice pulled Cole back. Looking at the five little guys in front of him, Cole couldn't help but sigh. Time flies so fast. It feels like sending a child to kindergarten. Well, Go ahead and take care of your brothers and sisters when you get to school, and write if you need anything. Martin nodded obediently. Other than that, Jerome and Ben didn't have many different emotions. Only Alice's young face showed reluctance and looked like she was about to cry. But Cole knew that this little cotton padded jacket could turn around and play happily. Martin and others got into the car. Cole saw Draco and Narcissa. Lucius did not show up today, he must be busy with something. Cole didn't go over to talk to Narcissa. He knew that Narcissa had been blaming him for not taking care of Sirius. But Cole didn't bother to explain that he didn't send anyone in to kill Sirius because of the Black Bloodline. Sirius can coexist peacefully if he knows a little bit about each other, and everything about the Black family has nothing to do with him. If you don't know what's going on, Cole won't be merciful. After sending the child away, Cole had to go back and do his own business such as registering the broom company, and greeting the Ministry of Magic. Fudge is a greedy guy. In the past, Cole gave some profits to the Ministry of Magic to avoid trouble, but now the Black family no longer needs it. 
What's more, the broom business is a formal and legal business. Unlike nocturnally, it is something that can be put on the table. International Magical Federation coal is not alone, and fudge can no longer be an obstacle to the black family. On the Hogwarts Express, Slytherin's box was far more luxurious than other houses. Not only was it large in space, but it also had many people waiting on it. All this is because the wizards in Slytherin are basically pure blood nobles, and these nobles will not look down on themselves when they are away from home. Of course, it's not that there are no hybrid wizards in Slytherin, it's just that there are fewer of them. Of course, these hybrid wizards can enter Slytherin. All of them are talented in magic, and they are also somewhat ambitious. After all, the tradition of the Snake Academy is to be ambitious, shrewd, value honor, assess the situation, be wise and protective, and win first. Those half-blood wizards who hope to gain status or everything through learning magic will basically choose Slytherin. Although Slytherin is known as the back garden of pure blood wizards, it's not that half-blood wizards can't make their mark in Slytherin, they're just rare. Pure blood wizards are not as xenophobic as outsiders imagine. Pure blood wizards only reject the addition of waste, and they only exclude capable mixed blood wizards. Most wizard families will woo them, and many mixed blood wizards will also choose to join pure blood families and enter pure blood families through marriage. A pure blood family does not mean that everyone in the family is a wizard with pure blood. If that were the case, a family would die out in a few generations. Wizards are not fools. They will do things that are beneficial to their family. Pure blood nobles only ensure that the bloodline of the main line is not tarnished. Other than that, a family cannot only have those few people. Just like Snape, he is also a half-blood wizard. Severus' mother is from the Perlin family and his father is a muggle who cannot do magic. But this does not affect Snape's excellence. In addition to his talent in magic, Snape is also an internationally renowned potions master. This title alone can ensure that Snape's status in the wizarding world is not low. What's more, many pure blood families wanted to marry their daughters to Snape in order to turn the potions master into one of their own. But it is a pity that Snape has his own heart and does not accept the goodwill of any family, except the Malfoy family. Lucius was very smart and had a good relationship with Snape when they were students. After Draco was born, Snape became Draco's godfather. Because of this identity, Snape is naturally close to the Malfoy family. Martin took his younger siblings to the Black family's box. Yes, the Black family has an exclusive box on the Hogwarts Express. In fact, the Malfoy family also has it. In recent years, Cole has become a shareholder of Hogwarts, and countless gold galleons are sent to Dumbledore every year. Dumbledore would still give him this little bit of face, so who would ask a pure blood noble to pay for it? The box was very large and had a space extension spell cast on it, so the box with five children didn't feel crowded at all. Alice jumped and threw her handbag on the sofa, raised her arm, and a white snake appeared on Alice's arm. Crystal clear, it looks like a gem under the light. Its red eyes are even more breathtaking, and the two fangs in its mouth are even more extraordinary. Alice, take care of your snake. Father said not to let it out in crowded places. If it bites someone, father will definitely not let it go. Martin rubbed his head and worried. All the younger brothers and sisters were easy to deal with, but Alice was the most noisy and would pretend to cry in front of her mother. I know, brother, I won't let it bite anyone. Besides, dad made an agreement with the school and allowed us to take him. Alice's words, we, show that Alice is not the only one with dangerous pets. Originally, Dumbledore stipulated that young wizards could only bring pets such as owls, toads or mice. But when Cole wrote a letter to Dumbledore, he helped Hogwarts replace a batch of new equipment and ensured that the Black family would bear all consequences. This matter was solved easily. Cole knew that although his children were not very obedient, they were not evil people at heart. I won't offend others unless they offend me. If someone wants to harm Martin and the others, Martin and the others are not children who have never seen blood. Seeing that he couldn't stop his sister, Martin simply let his snake out for fun. A one meter long black venomous snake coiled around Martin's arm. Jerome's was a brown snake that had been coiled up and lying on top of Jerome's head, like a piece of shit that followed its owner to sleep. Darlene's was a red snake, its slender pupils stared into Darlene's eyes, and it crawled onto Darlene's body, its scales giving off a hint of coolness. 
The only special thing is bands. The 4 to 5 meter long gray body is scary to look at. The most helpless thing is that Ban thinks big as king. That's why he chose such a huge snake, which can also be said to be the existence of a python. For a moment, people and snakes were dancing together in the box. If a little wizard came in, he would be scared crazy. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support my channel.